This here is the 2014 Polaris Gem E4. With a dry weight of close to 1,500 pounds, this baby comes fully stocked with seating for four, 12-inch tires, and a speed topping out at 25 miles an hour. I think the idea of this car is that you pull up in it and people know you're taking charge. Kind of like my guest today, LMU 16th president, Dr. Timothy Law Snyder. I'm David Tassoni, and this is LMU Presidents in Carts Getting Coffee. To call Dr. Snyder a larger than life figure in Jesuit higher education would be an understatement, and we're so fortunate to have him here at LMU. This is his first time living on the West Coast after holding high-ranking positions at Georgetown, Fairfield University, and most recently, Loyola, Maryland, for seven years. By trade, Dr. Snyder is a mathematician, earning both his master's and PhD in applied and computational mathematics from Princeton. In case you had this notion that Dr. Snyder spends all his free time computing quadratic equations, think again. At Loyola, Maryland, he hosted a podcast on academic success, and he loves recording music. President Snyder. It's David. Hi, David. How are you? Remember how we talked about getting coffee today? You bet. Did you manage to snag the cart? You know it. The E4? Nothing but the best. Nice. See you in five. Bye-bye. David. President Snyder, how are you? I'm doing great. How you doing? I have the cart parked out at front. You want to go take it for a ride? Drawer. After you. No, you're that, please, after you. I insist. You, I, please. You're, you're, a, you're a senior. You're the president. I know, but... Oh my gosh. Woo! Shocks and all. You know, I had to make sure you got the presidential treatment today. We have a long day ahead of us. Let's get, get going. going. Okay. Thank you. Oh, we're on a roll. Oh yeah. Hi, rolling. This thing do a wheelie? I think if we threw it in reverse, we could potentially get it up on one wheel. Interesting. <laughs> so, why'd you choose uh, applied mathematics? Why math? Um. You know, math is really interesting, especially when you get to the research level, because you know a lot of people think of math as just numbers and problems or your checkbook or whatever. But it's really like solving puzzles. Yeah. And as you're doing research mathematics, you're getting toward a sort of, you're working on this mammoth puzzle mm -hmm. that nobody's ever solved. But yeah. on the way there, you're designing your own that you have to conquer in order to set yourself up to get there. So it's really, um, can be a real exploration of, of your mind and existence in ways that aren't necessarily realized by people who don't get deeply into it. It's pretty cool. So did you ever play any sports in like high school or in college? You know, I, I didn't, and, and I did, like high school, I did a lot of handball. Okay. And, and I was playing football for fun, and, and this guy smashed my thumb backward. You know, your father will be like, can you move it? And I'm like, yeah, I can, but I think it's broken, Dad. No, if you can move it, it's not broken. Six months, I played handball with a broken thumb. Oh. I was like, really? Yeah, we're looking for two on two. We want to play some game. You guys want to go? We're, we have some game, but uh, not this, not like, that game. Yeah, not this game. Not that we're, game. Gonna, we're supposed to get coffee because we're going to do this caffeine, and we need to, like, we have this. Right, right, whatever. Whatever. Uh, okay. Um, oh, we skirted that. Aggressive <laughs> nights. <laughs> So have you heard about the history of Foley Pond before? No. So one of the cool things about this pond is that for certain holidays they have, they dye it different colors. Mm -hmm. So for instance during St. Patrick's Day sometimes we dye it green. For this feast of Jesuit martyrs they dye it red in honor of the Jesuit oh, wow. martyrs. So we, so we use it to show symbolically what is going on during that time. I see. When is your birthday? February 23rd. You hungry? Way hungry, famished. You probably want to go to that Iggy's place you were telling me about, right? Two Iggy's. Whole wheat tortilla stuffed scrambled eggs. Nope. That's not bad. It's a breakfast burrito. That's pretty good. Yeah. Turn that into a pancake. Yeah. 
So, how was your day today? I've had a great day. I met with the TLC scholars, had a few meetings with administrators. It's been slick. It's yeah. good. Well fed. LMU tends to feed everyone very yes. well. What extracurriculars did you do in college? Well, I had to work to, to survive through part of it. <laughs> so um, I had a couple of jobs. I had the full-time school gig, and then I had a part-time job in a laboratory that was downtown, from which I learned a lot. And then I was a full-time musician, and that would be up to six nights per week. Wow. So, and it was great because I got to meet so many different people. I got to run a business, so that was my main activity. Chicken, Chicken Caesar. Caesar. Beatles or Rolling Stones? Stones. Bob Marley or Bob Dylan? Marley. Favorite movie? Wings of Desire. Favorite book? Right now I like Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman, but it's also very hard to get away from War and Peace for me, and The Stranger, it's some of those classics that I love. Order up. So what aspects of Ignatian spirituality should students be thinking of as they become alumni? There's the, the obvious ones, being persons for others. Certainly the Magis, it means that you constantly have a restless desire, again, to make things happen for others. So it's an orientation. It's an orientation toward every frame of life. I have this motif I like to talk about called the head hits the pillow moment. So the idea is, as one goes to sleep at night, one can ask, is the world any better by virtue of my having been here since my head last separated from this pillow? And if one asks that question on a daily basis, I think it can keep us focused really well. So, you're entering your fourth year. What makes LMU a special place to you? For me, one of the things that has always stand out in the internships that I've had and the people that I've met is the type of person that's attracted to LMU. A lot of people at different universities tend to think about it as, how can I make the most money? How can I make a living for my family or for any of that? Whereas people at LMU tend to think of, how can I be that person who ignites that light within another person? Now I see why you're president. <laughs> when you get out of here and you tell somebody, I attended LMU, I want them to respond immediately. Wow. How about yourself? You've been at several Jesuit institutions, so what makes LMU a special place? Well, there are so many things. LMU has a certain sophistication about it in terms of the way it's run. I love that. It has made my entry a bit more graceful, and I believe it'll make our work more productive. A second feature would be just the, the, the quality of the welcoming. The people have a true goodness about them, and they ask the in-depth questions about how well one is. So it's not just, you know, how's your arrival? Has your stuff arrived? But there are deeper questions about where's one's soul in this mix? How are you resonating? The third thing is LA. So here we are on the bluff overlooking one of the most dramatic and stunning, beautiful, diverse, truly awesome cities in the world. And we are so wonderfully located, proximal to Latin America, proximal to Asia. So we have some advantages other universities cannot touch, especially when you combine that with our Jesuit and Marymount mission with the quality of our alumni, the quality of the kinds of internships that you had. So from what you know so far, what do you think are LMU's greatest challenges? The challenge current right now, I think for any university, is the whole question of how can those deserving of an LMU education access that education. And that's why we have a $100 million scholarship initiative. and We're 70% of the way there. One thing I would like to be able to do is taking better advantage of the world's need for caring creativity. I've never been in a place that has so many good things that are unknown, so we have this whole notion of the best kept secret. First of all, you don't want to be a secret, but if you are, you don't want to be the best kept. So I think we all need to coalesce in terms of understanding exactly who we are, exactly how we want to be viewed, and try to influence how we are viewed really as a way, as a first step in doing a better job at getting the word out in terms of the awesome quality that we offer. So here's a loaded question. What are you hoping to accomplish this year? The first and primary activity is to get to know the LMU community. We need to take active and immediate steps to help our image, and many call this branding. 
some don't like that word, but the brand is what people feel and experience when your name comes up. We have so many good things. So it's just a matter of getting it out, and that's the best problem to have. Yeah. Oh, please, you put I, that away. This is, this is for me. This is, I got this. This is your first time here. Let me, I know. Let me treat it. I this got is it. my first time. There. Whose idea was this? <laughs> <laughs> really, let me get it. Okay. I, let me get it. All right, you take all right. Your, all right. You feel like you've been carded? Well, it sounds like you have your work cut out for you, and actually we both do. Yeah. So we should probably hightail. We should probably get to it. Already. It's going to be fun. Yeah. So, President Snyder, have you learned the fight song yet? Sure. You want to sing it? Fight on Loyola, fight to win. Roar on you lions, roar again. Keep up the spirit, born of old. Our loyalty will never grow old. Hey. Fight on Loyola, we're all here. Backing you with a cheer. We're beside you, here to guide you. So fight, 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 fight. 